Hello again and welcome to the third and final installment of this video tutorial, how to create an environment painting. Once again, my name is Corbin Hunter and this is a tutorial for cgcookie.com. Uh, if you haven't seen parts one and two of the video or of the tutorial, you should check them out so you know what I'm talking about. This section focuses on the final rendering and the uh, tips and tricks you can use to uh, bring your image to a polish. I say final rendering loosely because you could take the image a lot farther than I have here. You could probably spend three times the amount of time on it. But this is enough to get you, uh, get you an idea of how to go about it at least. So let's get into it. So what you see here is me going in with a round brush with a little bit of scatter, as you can see on the side there. And I'm trying to uh, clean up and define the brush marks and the, uh, the trees themselves trying to get rid of any loose or repetitive brush marks, adding trees where they need to be, and uh, just generally giving it a little bit of elbow grease. Um, too much custom brush and not enough um, love and care gives you kind of stamped, uh, weird-looking digital images. So after you use a texture brush or a custom brush uh, that has a specific shape to it, you should always go on over top and uh, use your uh, standard kind of brushes or very simple brushes and uh, give it some handmade love. Uh, here we've got just a kind of spattery brush and I'm going in to put some moss on that tree. Uh, you could spend a lot of time rendering out the moss on that or you could uh, take photos and um, lay them in for some texture. That would be an excellent way to give it some texture. Here I'm doing everything uh, without photos and without references so that I can uh, show you how it's done from imagination, but that's one method that you could take. Okay, so uh, once again I'm trying to push the form on the trees. I don't want them to just look like uh, stamps. I want them to look like they've got a bit of shape to them. And here you could spend a lot of time blending and rendering the the bushy parts of the trees, the leafy parts, but uh, that's not what I'm into for this stage of the painting. This is a soft light layer and I'm going in with a slightly grungy brush uh, with some yellow to give it some hits of uh, what looks like sunlight. Okay, what's here? Oh yeah, I, I played around with some vines up top, but I uh, didn't find anything that wouldn't take a very long time. Uh, so what I end up doing here is focusing um, on the already existing vines. Uh, you don't want to leave anything in that kind of sketchy state that I had there. You, uh, you want um, to always make sure that you, uh, you, you pour the necessary amount of detail into uh, to get your point across and so that the brush marks aren't distracting. You never want, uh, you never want your medium to be distracting from the piece itself. You could do this with a standard round brush, this part right here, but uh, I'm using a vertical brush just to save time and uh, make it a little easier on myself. This is just to give a, a denser feel to the forest as I felt it was um, kind of kind of out in the open, kind of yeah just a little too open. I wanted it murkier and not darker per se, but denser for sure. This is kind of a weird brush. I don't know where I found it, but uh, I wanted a little bit of a funkier pattern here. Um, here I'm just uh, I'm breaking up the bigger forms that I had into some smaller forms and some more detailed forms to give you something to look at on the main tree. Uh, like I said, you could take a lot longer doing it um, but uh, I just want to give the the general idea. Of course, you could you could take this technique ten times further and really render it out into a, a really nicely finished piece. But that's not what I'm focusing on right now. Uh, okay, so remember those lights that I painted right over at the beginning? Going back in with these. So you've you've seen this routine a couple times now. Flex of light and a color dodge layer over top, or sometimes an overlay layer. And I give this, I, I use the eraser on a bit, on it a bit to uh, 
um, blend it out, and then I blur it as well. I think I duplicate it and blur it again, and just some stuff. You uh, you just want to make sure that you get the proper softness to it, basically. I didn't want them to look too artificial or too out of place. Uh, so here I went in and uh, tried to give it some, some light, uh, some cast light from the windows onto the trees themselves. I'm not really sure how well that worked. Um, maybe if I had put a little bit more time into it. But I, I think it helped out a little bit. Uh, the other thing I do here is I use a soft light layer to put shadows around the... Uh... Oh, okay, let me talk about this. I made a curves layer to darken everything a little bit and to change the colors. And then I masked out the areas that I wanted lighter. I wanted it gloomier in general, but I wanted to keep the lightness in some places. Adding more glow to the windows. Anyway... Um, okay, so here I'm just giving a little bit more detail to the shapes of the windows. Um, as I was saying before, I uh, darkened the areas around the windows to make it look like they were glowing more. That's a little trick you can use. If you want something to look glowing or look like it's casting light, uh, make the environment a little bit darker. Because um, if you think of how a camera works, you're not going to see pinpricks of light if it's, you know, in the middle of the daytime. You, you can't even see fire, really, in the middle of the day uh, if there's not a bunch of smoke around it and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, so if you want to be able to see the light sources, then make your environment a bit darker. Okay, so a little bit of fog here to separate the... Uh, big trees from the foreground vines. And here's a, a trick that lots of illustrators and concept artists use. Uh, it's called the unsharp mask. And it uh, does exactly what you'd expect. It sharpens up the image. Um, gives it a bit of contrast and cleans up the edges. Okay, so here I'm using the lasso tool and I used a fog brush and I just brushed in some light beams, some foggy light beams. This is another good trick but you don't want to go too overboard on it because it looks pretty cheesy. Um, so that's uh, to give the effect that the light is kind of cutting through the fog or coming through the foliage or whatnot. I do end up blurring it out a bit more so don't worry about that. You can use those kind of light beams pretty creatively and I do tend to use them a lot in my forests because I like the way it looks. I'm putting all my tips and tricks kind of layers uh, up top and I'm leaving them there. I'm not uh, I'm not merging them down because it's easy to go overboard with this stuff. So what I like to do is I like to uh, you know make my new layer and go in with my editing and then I want to uh, that's just a bit more fog from from the waterfall give it a bit more perspective. Uh, so I like to make a new layer, put my adjustment on it, and then once I think it looks good, I usually drop the opacity by about 20%, uh, sometimes even more, uh, because I have a tendency to go overboard with contrast and stuff like that. So by dropping the opacity on everything, I make sure I don't go too overboard. So here I made a new layer, filled it with 50% gray, and filled it with 400% noise. Then I used the spatter filter on it three times and set it to overlay and then blurred it a tiny bit. This gives the whole thing a little bit of grunge, a little bit of noise and it helps bring the uh, kind of the density, the, the texture density and the detail density up a little bit to make your image a bit more believable. You won't notice it right away but it helps it pop. Okay so you saw I did this trick earlier as well. Put some specks in the air, various colors and blur them. This is the similar thing, but with brush strokes, and I kind of twist it here into the right shape. It goes on a soft light layer mode, and it just adds to the effect of light breaking through the trees or breaking through the fog. Uh, that helps sell the illusion of uh, depth, the illusion of scale, and um, the feeling of light emanating from behind that big foreground tree. 
Okay, so I think that's pretty much just about it here. Oh, that's right. So I copied everything to a new layer using uh, Command Alt Shift E, which is a crazy shortcut. And then I used a combination of the auto adjustments uh, up in the image adjustments, auto tone, auto contrast, and they gave me some really neat colors. Uh, and I actually like their colors better than what I had, which kind of seems like a cheat. But uh, sometimes you just you need a little bit of something to uh, spark your imagination, kind of. And it made me realize that I could do even more with random colors, uh, tossing some purples and some blues in the sh in the shadows. So I uh, again I dropped the opacity of the uh, automatic adjustment layer, and then I brushed in some of my own adjustments on top of that. Um, because I didn't want to destroy all the atmosphere and all the lighting that I had worked to create. So after I thought I'd finished it, um, I got the review that uh, the water didn't have as much rendering as the rest of the piece, and uh, so we're going to fix that. Um, sometimes you know, like I was saying, you, you look at the image too long and you get too used to it and you don't actually see it for what it is. You see it for what you think it is. Uh, so in this case, I had thought that the uh, water was doing okay and then uh, when it was pointed out to me that it actually didn't have the detail that the rest of the piece had, I was like, that's totally true. So uh, I looked at a couple waterfall pictures just to uh, get myself kind of in the waterfall game and um, yeah, put in about 20 more minutes of detailing on the water. So right over top of the other layers, I've made a layer, and I'm just going in with a just a, an opaque brush, nothing special, and kind of painting in some vertical lines and uh, uh, giving it some texture. Because waterfalls aren't just liney, of course. That's an effect of uh, like long shutter speed photography. But I didn't want a long shutter speed dreamy kind of look. I wanted it to be a little bit more... Uh, epic, a little bit more pillowed. So that's what you see me painting here. So I'm just going in with uh, color picking off the background. Um, you can see in the layers right above the color adjustments and everything. I'm just going in with a new layer and just plunking on some detail. Uh, this is exactly how you'd go about detailing up uh, anything else in the image. And actually, since I recorded the rest of this, uh, I've um, I went in for a few hours and detailed the trees and vines and all sorts of things and this is exactly how I did that too. You just go in right over top and just start painting. It's really hard to mess it up once you've got a solid base. You just you get to go in and pick colors off the canvas and uh, just have a lot of fun experimenting. So I wanted it to be you know relatively soft because the water falls in these big sheets and it's got this soft billowy feel to it and I really wanted to capture that. Uh, here I decided to use the smudge tool a little, a little bit for some selective blurring on the waterfall. Uh, not too much motion blur, but a little bit, just to keep it from looking too plain, give it a little bit of motion. Uh, and then here I went in with uh, some purer white and decided to uh, detail up the pillows a little bit and give it a little bit more form and uh, kind of accent the cascading quality of the water. Uh, before it was just these kind of stripes and uh, it, in my head it had uh, a good water feel but you know once I looked at it again I, I kind of realized that uh, it didn't have all the detail that it should have and I wanted it to get that billowing you know sheets of water feel. So uh, I don't have a reference up on the screen right now uh, another good way to do this would be to actually go and take some pictures of waterfalls and just lay them in here. That would work totally fine. But of course I'm showing you how to paint it from scratch. Uh, this is a soft light layer. I'm using it to uh, accent the forms a little bit so it doesn't come out so flat. Uh, they're all in their own layer group uh, and those will be visible on the uh, PSD download as well. Uh, it needed a little bit of work in the foreground, too. And like I've said before, you can take a long time detailing this if you want to. Uh, and after I finished all this recording, I did take a lot longer and detail a lot of the elements up. 
Uh, but it's boring and repetitive, and uh, there's not a lot to it. So I'm not going to show you all of that. You just keep building layers and layers of detail with kind of the same brushes. Uh, okay, and then uh, just giving the roots a little bit more character there. Easy, just a regular brush. Uh, and then that pretty much wraps it up for uh, taking care of the water a little bit. So there you go. That was just a little additional thing that I had missed. So now we're actually finished. So I forgot to mention that that noise trick where you uh, make the gray layer and then generate the noise and then uh, spatter it and set it to overlay and blur it. That belongs to Dan Luvisi and you should check him out because he's awesome. Uh, some of the brushes I was using there were his. Uh, some of them were, a lot of them were my own custom brushes and some of them I got the ideas from Linda Berkvist uh, and some of them just come from all over around the net from random artists here and there but they're all free to use and uh, they're all stuff you could find yourself uh, if you knew where to look um, but I'll keep them, uh, I'll, I'll put them up in the download and whatnot and like I said all of the adjustment layers are in their layers and uh, sitting there in the PSD file uh, so you can check out uh, where I placed them and, and how I use them and everything like that. Uh, the, only, the only other thing I've got to say about this is that you could spend you know, a lot more time using this technique to uh, push the images further. Uh, you know, I didn't even get into blending, I didn't get, even get into uh, hardcore full detail rendering. Uh, I think I ended this, uh, this image at 5000 pixels wide, so there's definitely room for, um, for the rendering. And I, I recommend that when you're doing a painting like this, um, when you think you're done, take one more hour, render it a bit further and see what you can come up with. Or, uh, you know, just spend a bit putting extra stuff in and see what sticks. Or maybe try removing an element that you've kind of felt iffy about. And, um, just pour in a little extra time and see what you can do with it. Um, and I hope, uh, I hope you've been inspired by this tutorial and uh, I hope you take this technique and use it to turn out some really cool, really polished work and uh, bump up your productivity, alter your workflow a little bit, and I hope you gain some tips and tricks from it. So thank you for sticking through and watching the whole thing. Once again, my name is Corbin Hunter. I did this for cgcookie.com. It has been a pleasure, and now go paint some stuff.